Actually, we have already finished the electrostatics. Chapter 21 to 26 is about uh, electrostatics. So in chapter 20, starting from chapter, chapter 28, we will start to consider the magnetic field. Actually, in my opinion, magnetic field is uh, more difficult than the electric field because electric field is somehow like a uh, radial direction, which means that the, the, the direction is parallel to the to the to the R vector, to the R vector is parallel, which means with the same direction or opposite direction. You don't need to uh, determine the direction uh, difficulty. However, the for the magnetic field, we actually need to consider the the direction using the right hand rule because it involves the uh, cross product. Involve the cross product. So. In my opinion, it's more difficult to um, to understand the concept. But actually, uh, so we will learn it in uh, chapter twenty-eight to thirty. So in chapter twenty-eight, we'll start to learn uh, when there are some uh, electric field, uh, sorry, uh, magnetic field, and um, what will be the the effect. To the to the charged particle, and then in chapter twenty nine we'll start to consider how to generate the magnetic field, and uh, in chapter thirty we will consider when the when the magnetic field is time varying, which means changing uh, with respect to time, then it will generate some electric field, then things will get crazy because. The varying magnetic field will generate E field, and if varying E field will also generate ma uh, magnetic field, then the stuff will become uh, really really complicated. But actually, we start from the um, easy part first. <laughs> so uh, this is the outline. We'll start to consider the magnetic field and the cross field and the Hall effect, uh, which is a very interesting. Uh, Experiment, which is uh, this experiment is the one to uh, to verify that the charged particle is negative charge, not a positive charge. Before that, the physician consider the charged particle in the circuits is like charged particle moving, so they define the current with this direction and yeah so we have some other topics to consider also and magnetic dipole we have learned the electric dipole so magnetic dipole is topo topologically similar uh, stuff so first what is a magnetic field so actually um, in this textbook, it called B field the magnetic field, but actually, more precisely, it should be called the magnetic flux density. And magnetic field should be H. However, uh, throughout this book, it used the B magnetic field for B, B field. So I don't really try to uh, change this, change the name because it's not possible to, to change all the names. <laughs> but yeah, and actually I think it's not really, really important to you. But, but actually I just let you know that um, more precisely, maybe you can check it on Wikipedia. It will tell you that uh, B field is actually the magnetic flux density. Magnetic flux density. But uh, from now on, I will still keep using uh, magnetic field because uh, the all the slides, all the all the uh, all the words in this textbook is use uh, magnetic field. So magnetic field B can be defined to be a vector quantity that exists when exerting a force on the charge uh, on a charge moving with velocity v. So at um, at, uh, in chapter 
21, which means at the very beginning of this semester, we learned the Coulomb's force, which means that um, which means that, or in chapter 22, we know that if we have uh, E-view, if we have E-view, then we will start to know uh, what will this uh, E-view affect a charged particle Q. And of course, we already know that if there is an E-view in the space and then there is a positive charge, maybe a positive charge, then this charge, there will be a force acting on this charge and pointing to the same direction, which is uh, F equals QE. Or if it is a negative charge, the direction of this force will be the other way around. Now we also consider this stuff is like, if now we have a magnetic field, magnetic field, and now we assume a charged particle Q is moving in the space, then there will be a force acting on this acting on this uh, charged particle. There will be a force. <laughs> this force is due to the magnetic field and the moving of the charge. So the physician found that um, it will look like this. So if we have a B field like this, and then the force FB, FB over the charge, the absolute value of charge and also the velocity, the velocity of the charged particle, that is the B view. That is the B view. The B view is defined like this. Uh, yeah. So a force on a charge uh, with velocity V. So the force FB and then the magnet uh, and then the magnitude of B can be defined in terms of the force magnitude. So the magnitude uh, of, the, of the magnetic field, of the B field, is this force divided by the charge and also the velocity of the charge. So for the E field case, it doesn't relate to the velocity of the charge, but now it relates to the velocity of the charge. And if we write it in the vector form, it is like FB equals Q times V cross B. So cross is the, is the cross product for the rectus, for the rectus. And uh, of course, I suppose you should have learned the cross product. So you know that uh, you need to use the right hand rule to, def to determine the direction of FB. And of course, similarly, uh, simply, speaking, uh, simply speaking, the direction of FB should be perpendicular to both uh, V and B. And we will uh, talk more about that uh, uh, in a few pages later. So this force is called the Lorentz force. Lorentz force on the particle by the field is equal to the charge Q times the cross product of the velocity and the field B. Uh, yeah. so, so this is the vector form and if you write it in the scalar form, the cross product is like V, the magnitude of the V times the magnitude of the B, VB times the sine phi, which is the angle between V and B angle between V and B. So I suppose you should have know it. Uh, you should have know it. So this is the magnetic field and the Lorentz force. So now we, uh, we would like to determine the um, direction of this force. So the equation tells us that the direction of F, the direction of F, so uh, we of course use the use the right hand rule de to determine the direction, and um, yeah, the procedure I suppose you have learned is like a v cos b. So you use your forefinger points to the direction of v, and then you cross to b, and of course this angle, this angle should be smaller than. 
one hundred and eighty larger than larger than zero because if you if you flip your finger if you flip your finger like this and then you turn for more than one hundred eighty you you will you will point to the other direction but you need to make sure that this angle is between one hundred and eighty and zero zero and one hundred and eighty such that your uh, the direction you get is correct so when you point at the V and then cross to B and then your thumb will pointing upward so that's the direction of the F uh, of V cross B and if Q is positive then then the direction of F V is the same as V cross B if Q is negative then they point to the opposite directions So this is the position, point to the V and then cross to B and then this direction, this direction. The direction of the thumb is the, is the direction of V cross B. And if the charge is positive, then FB pointing to this direction. And if uh, the charge is negative, then FB points to the opposite direction. So this is, pretty simple I think any questions so um, there is the uh, yeah so that we can so here we can uh, slightly talk about the geometric meaning for the uh, for the cross product and dot product so for the cross product if we have two vectors for example we have a v and b here so of course we know that uh, this is theta and then we can use the right hand rule uh, four finger point to v and then cross to b so that your thumb will point to uh, this direction which is uh, v cross b And actually the value, the value of this one is the area, the area of this uh, uh, parallelogram, parallelogram huh, of this. Yeah, so V cross B is actually the area of this shape because you know that uh, for a for a triangle for a triangle the area of the of one of the triangle is uh, one half uh, v b psi theta so actually for the whole for the whole shape it is double so it is a uh, v b psi theta v b psi theta so this is the geometric meaning for the uh, for the cross product, and of course for the for the inner product for the for the dot product for the dot product uh, for the dot product. If we have a a dot b equals a b cosine theta, so in this case we have a and b and then cosine theta. So, so the projection of the B to the vector A is this one is this one is B cosine theta. So this is a right angle. So the length of this part is the projection. It's the projection of the B on vector A. So the length is uh, B cosine theta. Uh, B cosine theta. So AB cosine theta is like the length of A times the projection of the B on A. So this part. So this is the geometric meaning for the, this is the inner product. Inner product. Or you can call it a dot product.
this one usually call it a cross product. Okay, so any problem? Any questions? Okay, so next, um, so here we have a highlight. So the force FB acting on a charged particle moving with velocity V through a magnetic field B is always perpendicular to V and B. So this is the most simple uh, uh, characteristic, always perpendicular to V and B. So now a quick checkpoint. So the figure shows three situation in which a charged particle with velocity V travels through a uniform uh, magnetic field. In each situation, which is the direction of the magnetic force on the particle? So what is the direction? What is the direction of the force? For part A, uh, V points to the negative x-axis, uh, B points to the negative y-axis. What is the direction of the uh, of FB? What is the direction of FB? What is the direction of FB? V cross B. Front positive C axis. Positive C axis. Positive C axis. So this uh yeah this side is the positive y axis. This one is the positive uh, uh this one is positive x, this one is positive y, and this one is positive c. This one is positive C. So you can consider X axis cross the Y axis will be the Z axis. The coordinate system itself also follow the, the right hand rule. So what is uh, for puppy is a negative charge. B cross B, which direction? Positive. Are you sure? For See how many minutes? Which directions? Which direction? Okay, positive x. Positive x. Mm, positive x. A positive x, yes. Yeah, so FB. For this one, FB like this. This one, FB like this. How about the third one? No. Should be a none. No direction because this one is zero. 
the angle between them is 180 degree and cosine 180 degree is zero. So uh, FB equals zero. So one more thing I would like to tell is that uh, of course, you know uh, I J K is the I J K is the unit vector for x y z axis. So you already know that I dot I is one, uh, J dot J is one, K dot K is one, and I dot J will be zero, and so on and so forth. So now uh, we will also consider I cross J uh, and whatsoever. So let me write it here. If we have cross and then we have I, J, uh, K. I, uh, mm, not so good to write it like this. Maybe we can write it as a I dot I. Uh, and then i dot j, i dot k, and then j dot i, j dot j, j dot k, k dot i, k dot j, k dot k. So we totally have nine identities. So actually, uh, these three are zeros. These three are zeros. And i dot j will be k. j dot k will be i. And then k dot i will be j. And then i dot k will be minus j. j dot i will be minus k. k dot j will be minus i. So there are totally nine identity for the unit vector in the Cartesian uh, coordinate. So it is very easy to remember. You can just write a, a figure like this, i, j, k. If you, if you, um, if you rotate clockwise, uh, clockwisely, then it is positive sign. It is positive sign. If you rotate counterclockwisely, then it will be negative sign, which means that I cross J will be positive K. Uh, J cross K will be positive I, and K cross I will be positive J. And the other way around is I cross K will be negative J, K cross J will be negative I, J cross I will be negative K. And if they cross themselves, I dot I, J dot J, K dot K will be zero. So actually, I think you should know all this identity. In the physics textbook, some, in the hardcore physics textbook, they will use the notation 9 epsilon I, J, K, something like this. It is actually a tensor. It is actually a tensor. Okay, so this is about the, the cross product, the fundamental calculation about the, the cross product. So if you have the vector in, in the coordinate system using the, using the unit vector to represent the, the vector, then, then you, you can just follow that. You don't need to uh, use the right-hand rule. You can just follow this system to calculate everything. For example, for this one, if you draw a graph, you can use the right-hand rule to define uh, to design the F, what is FB. And now, you can also write it as a V. V is uh, minus V. V is a positive number. And V point to the negative x-axis. So we can write it as minus V i point to the x-axis, negative x-axis, so it is uh, minus vi. And then b point to the minus y-axis, so it is like a minus b 
uh, j minus bj. So uh, fb fb is q v cross b like this. So we have minus v minus b. So it becomes q v b. All the values are positive. This one, v and b are positive. Q is also positive in this case. So we have QVB and then I cross J, which is QVB and then uh, K. Because we have a I cross J to be K. So we can simply de determine the, the cross product like this without using any right hand rule. So this is our another way to, to determine the direction. Actually in the quiz exam you can determine the the direction in in both ways to verify what you get is correct if you have sufficient time to do so. Any questions? Okay, so next, um, yeah, we also have the similar uh, concept called the magnetic field line. From electric field, we have electric field line, and here we have magnetic field lines. So we can represent, uh, yeah, we can represent the magnetic field with field lines as we did for electric fields. So the direction of the tangent to the magnetic field line at any point gives the direction. So actually the same as the E field lines. And the spacing of the line represents the magnitude of the B. The magnetic field is stronger where the line are closer together and conversely. So actually, actually the same as the E field line. But it is now the, the, the B field line or the magnetic field line. And uh, yeah, so you can see if we have a magnetic bar, the magnetic field line is like this from the north pole to the south pole. To the south pole. So it is like the electric field line for the, for the electric dipole. For the electric dipole. However, for the magnetic field, we don't have a magnetic charge. For electric field, we have charge, and then charge is the uh, fundamental element, the fundamental element. Just like you play the Lego, uh, you can disassemble all the, all the blocks until the most fundamental block. For, electric, uh, for, electricity, uh, for electricity, the most fundamental building block is the charge. You can have positive charge, you can have negative charge. For electric dipole, it means that one positive charge and one negative charge with the same amount uh, combined together. They are keeping close together to form the uh, to form the electric dipole. But now for magnetic field, we can't find the charge. You can't really have a magnetic bar with only north pole, but not south pole, or the vice versa. North pole and south pole will also appear at the same time. Even you break it then if you break this bar, it will form S and N here, if you break it. If you put them all together, then it will add together to form the overall of N and 1N and 1S. So this is so-called the magnetic dipole. You cannot even find the, find the magnetic charge. And actually, for this graph, it, is, it shows we really have a magnetic bar and then we put some iron uh, fillings. Then the shape of these iron fillings will follow the magnetic field line. And then you, you can see that uh, this part is strong, so many, magnet, uh, many iron filling here. And then they will follow the magnetic field line. If it is more... Uh, if the iron feeling is uh, much enough, then they will probably uh, connect together.
so uh, two poles. So the closed field line enter one end of the magnetic uh, of the magnet and end the other uh, and exit the other end. So for E field line, it always start from the positive charge and end at the negative charge. And for magnetic field, it uh, similarly uh, we start from the magnetic field. We start from the north pole and then end at the south pole. So the end of the magnetic field from which line emerge is called the north pole, and the end of the magnetic field is called the south pole, because the magnet uh, the magnet has two poles, it's said to be magnetic dipole. Uh, opposite di magnetic dipole attract each other and nine magnetic dipole uh, repel each other. So I think even a, a kindergarten or or a primary student will know this. Uh, so magnetic dipole doesn't really exist. Uh, uh, sorry, magnetic monopole doesn't really exist. You, if you have interest, you can check it on Wikipedia. Um, yeah. Or although the physician try really hard to find uh whether it can really form the magnetic monopole, but actually so far uh there is no uh known experimental or observational evidence that uh magnetic monopole exists. And of course, uh in chapter thirty three. Uh, we will learn the Maxwell equation. Actually, you, you have already learned one of them. It's called the uh, Gauss law. For the Maxwell equation, there will be there are totally four equations. Two are about magnetic field, two are about uh, electric field. And of course, uh, the electric field have, have charges. However, magnetic field, the most fundamental uh, element is the dipole so the the equation are not so symmetric but the physician also derived the the symmetric version which means that they imagine if magnetic monopole exists how will uh, how will the maxwell equation look like you can also check it on on on, on the wikipedia so that's how the physician will do, uh, what the physician will do, they will consider or whether there will be monopole and if there are monopole, what will be the, what will the Maxwell equation becomes? It of course will, will influ influence many, thing, many things. Um, yeah, so. So let's see a, a sample problem. Uh, so now we have a uniform uh, magnetic field B pointing out of the page. So this um, this dot means pointing out of the page. Uh, pointing out of the page. Out of the page. If it is like cross, uh, many cross, it means into the page, into the page. So this uh, two notation is to set, specify the the vector direction in in a three D space. In a three D space, of course, on the paper you can only draw two D, so that you can have. Um, uh, this FB point to the right side, this V point to pointing upward. However, uh, the B pointing outside, so that we need some notation. So for this dot, which means that it is pointing out of the page, pointing to yourself, pointing to yourself, out of the page. If for the cross, for the cross, it means pointing into the page. So the uniform, uh, the the uni uh, a uniform field uh, with magnitude uh, one point two micro te uh, mD tester. Oh, so I think I have forgot to mention about the yeah the magnetic field the the SI unit 
the SI unit for the uh, magnetic field or for the B field should be Tesla. Uh, Tesla. Tesla. So actually, yeah, the guy who invented the, the AC, the AC electricity. Although now Tesla is famous due to the uh, electrical car. <laughs> Um, so this is the uh, MIDI Tesla. So it's direct uh, vertically upward throughout the volume of the lab uh, chamber. So a proton with a kinetic energy, 5.3 mega EV enters the chamber, moving horizontally from south to north. What a mag a magnetic deflecting force acts on the proton as it enters the chamber. The proton mass is uh, this one. So, um, so first of all, we need to uh, determine the velocity, the velocity, because as long as we need to calculate the force, we need to have a Q, V, and B. Of course, we uh, B is already given. Q is uh, Q is the charge of a proton. Of course, it is a 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb. And so we need, now we need to determine the velocity. We only know the direction, the V pointing upward, but we don't know the value yet. Although it tells you that the kinetic energy is uh, 5.3 uh, mega EV. So we can calculate as 2E over M and then take the square root which means k equals one half mv squared. I suppose you should be very familiar with this one. So this is uh, two times 5.3 times 10 to minus, uh, 10, to, 10 to the sixth power. And then times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. So because it is ev, and then you need to convert it back to the joule. I'll convert it back to the joule. So you need to multiply by this uh, factor. And then uh, divide by uh, 1.67 times 10 to minus 27. And then the whole time take the square root. So the V should be 3.2 times 10 to the 7 meter per second. Uh, meter per second. So next we can consider uh, F V to be Q V B sine phi. Of course we know the phi is uh, 90 degrees, so sine phi is 1. So we have a 1.6 times 10 to minus 19, which is the uh, charge amount of the proton. And then the V is uh, 3.2 times 10 to the seventh power, and then times 1.2 times 10 to minus the third power. This one, 1 1.2. 1.2 milli Tesla, so sine 90 degree, which is uh, 6.1 times 10 to minus 15 Newton. So, of course, it is not asked by this question, but actually you can calculate like the acceleration of this charge is Fb over m according to the second, uh, Newton's second law of motion. Uh, so it will be 6.1 times 10 to minus 15 over 1.67 times 10 to minus 27. So this acceleration is very large. 3.7 times 10 to the 12 meter per second square. So it's a very large acceleration. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a 10 minutes break.